This is the Violent Professional Podcast brought to you by AriesClothing.com. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me on the Violent Professional Podcast, episode 52. Episode 52. Thank you for being here. Truly appreciate it. Truly fucking appreciate you. I appreciate you like a fucking new snowfall on a fucking winter day. It's been fall too long, you know? It's been fall too long, and I appreciate you coming just like a new snowfall in the winter. Um, I understand it's fucking spring, and it's about to be summer, but I felt it's appropriate to say I appreciate you like a new snowfall. Right before it turns into fucking dirty gray, and I don't appreciate you. I appreciate you being here now. Thank you for supporting the podcast. Thanks for giving it a listen. Thanks for the download. If you download, if you download podcasts, I would appreciate that you hit the download button, you know. Um, you know, these podcasts have a ranking system and a rating system, and it all revolves around you hitting like, download, commenting, a whole bunch of shit, a whole bunch of unrealistic expectations for you guys to fucking do. It's like, oh, podcast free, but you're asking me to do a whole bunch of shit like download, like subscribe, fucking comment, yeah, all that shit, it's free, for reasons, um, and part of it is, I do my part, I give you some badass content, you give me your part by downloading this episode, it gets, gets the rankings up there, and, you know, lets people know about us, so that could be something awesome you do, I give you all this content, you listening to it for free, the least you could do is fucking do all that shit. All of the extra shit. I think it's more intensive than what I'm doing right now. So, I would appreciate if you did it. Anyway, um, back from the road trip. It's been a few days, but on podcast time, it's been no time at all. You probably heard it. Heard the episode. Episode 51. It's a fucking great time. Myself, Mark, David. You know, David likes the cheese. Although I didn't see him eat cheese the whole fucking time, which is surprising other than that juicy cheeseburger at that fucking place we... You know what we stopped at? That little fucking piece of shit burger stand with the chick with the brown teeth. That's the only time I saw him eat cheese. I'm starting to believe that it's all fucking bullshit. I don't know if he likes the cheese, but anyway, we're back. We had a great time. Podcast road trip. We're going to do it again. Um, we're going to do it again very soon. Looks like July. We're going to go south. We went north, east, Washington, headed into Idaho, got close to Montana. Um, and I just realized all the fucking lights are off for the fucking podcast video. Um, anyway, um, we had Northeast Washington. There was some cool shit. Go to Idaho and we almost made it to Montana, but not really close. We kind of swung back towards Spokane and ended the trip on a strong high note. Um, and it was good, good all around. It makes us want to do it again. I, I think we'll do a few a year, maybe two or three, do two or three trips each year. Um, and it'll be good. Uh, but one thing that the, the leaving this state I'm currently in Washington, it makes me realize something that I fucking hate Washington more than ever. When I get back, when I get back from Washington, I fucking hate it. And I like I seclude myself in my work, in my house, with my son. Like I don't ever fucking go out and hang out with people. Um, I don't. I just. But when I have to experience other fucking people, other fucking people, other fucking people, it pisses me off. Like, I, and especially this fucking liberal hippie fucking state. Like. Fuck this place. Fuck it hard. It, like, everybody that is from the outside, I know you've heard me say it before. I've heard it. I've said it plenty of times. Everybody from the outside is like, oh, fucking Narnia must be so amazing. <laughs> it's fucking not. It, at outward appearance. And then you get to the fucking deep, dark heart of the fucking uh, super fucking freedom stripping center of the fucking world. And it's fucking not. I can't, I can't truly express how much I fucking hate this state. And it's not, it's not one of those things where I'm like, 
where like people are like, well, you just got to change your outs, your fucking mindset, bro. No, my mindset's great. My mindset's the best. My mindset tells me I need to get the fuck out of this place. I don't fucking belong. And you think because I look like I'm from fucking the Pacific Northwest and all its magic and fucking Narnia and all fucking goat people and all that, you know, people riding around minotaurs and shit. You think I would, you think I would like to be here. And I just fucking don't. It's like my skin's crawling being in this state. There's, <laughs> I go on Facebook sometimes and there's like a group called Olympia looks like shit. And, um, <laughs> and it's just like everybody that fucking hates this place, but they all live here. That's the fucking weird part. It's like, if you hate it so much, why don't you move? There's a lot of reasons why you don't move from places. But it's funny to to look at the people that are, like, posting this shit, and they're talking shit about government. They're all fucking talking shit about fucking political parties. They're talking shit about stuff. And I post one fucking thing in there, and people are like, whoa, bro, that's too harsh. It's like, well, fuck. It's not like I showed you my dick. And it's not like I post a dick pic and then, you know. But anyway, um, I've got to consider a place to move after this because, and after, I mean, after this, like my son, I'm really here for my son. And then once he turns 18, which is a fucking long time away, um, is going to be when he turns 18 and he moves on with whatever he's doing, like I'm out, I'm fucking out or sooner. I don't know. Um, Because this is not the place for me, unless there's a drastic change in the fucking next few years. Like I love all the the dudes that are that are like a part of the group, and I they're all my friends and all that shit. But it's just like I do not fucking belong here. I do not belong in this section of the United States. Um, You know, I like to go on hikes, and you'd you'd think that that is like the fucking this is the place for it, but literally it's not. It's not because I don't like to mountaineer. Like I'm not going to get ropes. I'm not going to rock climb anytime soon. I just like to go on hikes. There's a lot of requirements to go on hikes. You need fucking 16 passes. You don't know which one until you get there. And then sometimes it's two or three passes that you need to get into the place. Then to drive on the road. And I'm not even fucking joking. It's crazy over here. Um, And then to top it off, the governor... <laughs> Like, he was running for president this year. Like, he was in, he was fucking, he was running. He was running. And he fucking, (laughs) he didn't make it, obviously. But the dude needs to get fucking speech classes. Like, I don't want to go on a fucking, (laughs) fucking tangent about the governor of Washington. But the dude has a fucking lisp. If you're a fucking public, like, someone who is a public speaker, and I know that's coming from me where I slur every other fucking words. But the dude has like a ma- major fucking lisp. He can't say half the shit. <laughs> and all the words he has to say have an S in it. And he can't fucking say them. Because he's like... <laughs> I don't even want to fucking do... I don't even want this in the podcast. But fuck it. I'm putting it in. Anyway. Uh, long and short. I hate this fucking this state. And I need to move. So if you have any ideas, fucking tell me. Uh, that's a true story. The governor of Washington has a fucking lisp. Like a fucking straight up lisp. <laughs> anyway, um, if you haven't picked it up already, the binge is back on, baby. The binge is back on. And in fact, I'm going to walk to my fucking beer fridge and get another one. So we can fucking set this podcast off right, baby. Oh, it's so good. It's so good when I crack it. Fucking crack! Release the Kraken! Oh, once it hits your lips, it's so fucking good! Uh, like I said, the binge is back on. You know, gains are high. Gains are huge. The gains are huge, and spirits are high. I try to figure this whole shit out, because I have, I've got a problem. And it's not your typical problem. I'm not blowing dudes in an alley to get fucking heroin. I don't, I don't overindulge. Some people might say. Some people might say I'm overindulging. You know, I'm drinking I'm drinking six to eight beers a night. Six to eight beers a night. Fact. Um, and then I'll take like a few days off when it's about 30 days of running on that binge. It's a fucking problem. You know, all the stats say that's an alcoholism type of situation. 
you know? And maybe I agree. But have you ever screen printed before? Have you ever been a screen printer? Have you ever have you ever worked a job that's just so fucking tedious? <laughs> and fucking <laughs> over and over again. Can like even construction would be more <laughs> like you know, not tedious than fucking screen printing. Um, no, don't get me wrong. I like I like my day job, but sometimes it's over and over and over again. And then going on social media to answer fucking you know customer service stuff or just the same fucking comments. It's a very fucking repetitive <laughs> Groundhog's Day type of situation. Now I say that all that, but I really do love it. Like I like being my own boss. But just some days like today. The reason I drink all the fuck time, you know, the common mistake that I have with any of this is that I DM everybody. And if you're somebody who has followed any of my profiles, you know, if you message me, I will DM you back. But I run into some issues. I run into some issues where people think that because I DM them, I'm the only, they're the only person I'm DMing. Or that we're friends, even though we've never met. I hate to fucking burst your bubble, but I'm fucking... I DM everyone. Now, I DM everybody. I DM everybody back. Everybody. And I got fucking hundreds of messages a day. I DM everybody. Everybody. Everyone. Ev- fucking everyone. Everyone I DM. There's very few times that I actually, like... The lowest I'll go is hit a heart on a fucking thing. When I'm just like, oh, I don't even want to respond to that. I'll hit a heart. No matter what, it doesn't matter. Because guess what? It's good for the fucking social media exposure. So I do it. And it doesn't mean I hate you as a person. You just got to understand. I get a lot of fucking DMs. I got five fucking profiles. My fucking, you you know, you hit your fucking profile icon in the bottom right and brings up shit. I got five profiles that I actively go on. But we've got way more than that. (laughs) Like, I've got way more profiles than that. I only use five of them. Out of the fuck, I can't even tell you how many I have. And I respond to every DM on every single one. It's almost like that's my job. It, it's crazy how much I do. And I, I'm just being honest about it. It's crazy how much I do in a day. And I'm still fucking doing it. Like, I've been up for fucking ever. Like, it, it feels like I've been up forever. And I immediately get to work. I immediately lay out orders for the main shit I do. I immediately get an uh, email. And I fucking go and be like, what do I have to do? Oh, I got this other job that like for I do a bunch of design work for other people too. And like photos and all this shit. I do a lot of shit. And then I fucking respond to everybody on DMs. And I'm posting content. I'm planning content. I'm doing all this shit. Talking to people. And then I got to make room for friends. And I got to make, and mostly my priority is my son, right? So now with COVID-19 going on, I'm fucking his teacher. I'm, <laughs> I'm fucking his teacher. No, I am his teacher as well with these little online things. And thankfully, they started doing online classes um, so that he can get in there and like have the instruction for math or writing or any of that stuff. And he can go and watch, you know, they do webcam stuff. So that gave a little bit of relief, but still. All of the other fucking shit as a single fucking person in this thing. Uh, with all that, uh, things have been, even with the coronavirus, like initially it was hard. Like things were hard and I was afraid for a little bit. But now uh, I've been thinking about expanding into a different space, getting employees again. Um, because I just can't fucking do it with some of you. <laughs> some of you that DM me, I just can't fucking do it. Um it's a challenge with all the shit I go, I have going on, and if I wasn't to respond to any of it, I'd just be like every other business owner. But I gotta fucking keep going because I'm trying to, I'm trying to make this fucking turd into a fucking diamond through heat and pressure somehow, you know. And mainly, you know, when you get, <laughs> when you have this much going on, it's almost like you don't give a fuck about success. You just give a fuck about getting by, you know. It's fucking almost midnight and I'm podcasting <laughs> and I've been up since fucking seven uh, to start all over again tomorrow. Oh, so, you know, the binge is back on and I, I was like, man, why do I drink so much? Because I don't drink 
a lot. Like, I don't drink to blackout fucking drunk. I don't drink past, like, a certain amount. I, I buy what I want for the night, and then I stop. Some would say that's a fucking problem. But for me, it's deal with the fucking shit. It's fucking relaxing at the end of the day. I like to feel buzzed. I like to fucking have a good time. And then, you know, and, and the hard part is I got I fucking have to stop myself from fucking designing and doing other shit. Because if any, if you've ever seen me, it is a non-stop work environment wherever I'm at, including right now. Like I'm doing podcasts and I'm going to go up to, uh, I'm going to go up to fucking more shit. I'm going to go up to more shit. I'm going to go fucking, I'm going to go and fucking, and I'm saying, like, I'm I'm taking a pause, I'm taking it back because I just realized how much I fucking work and how much I have to fucking take a break. Like, it's crazy. So much in my life is fucking, is, has taken a back seat. So fucking much has taken a back seat to just a thing I created, a fucking thing I've created, you know? <laughs> and then aside from all that, I've got fucking real world responsibilities like cleaning my house and fucking doing the dishes, and fucking walking my dog and everything else. It's almost too much, you know? It's almost like I want to blow my fucking brains out. <laughs> Not really. That's where the beer comes in. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. I'm mentally tough. Been through a lot worse. <laughs> um, Binge is back on. Spirits are high. It's true. True. Spirits are high. It's how I get through it. You know, it, it's not, I'm not saying it's, it's, I'm not saying it's what you need to do. I'm just saying it works for me. Whatever works for you, you find that. <laughs> get yourself happy. Um, But hey, kids, there's, there's some new merch. If you like t-shirts, you like, you like putting stuff on. I just realized that I was looking at my fucking recording device when I should have been looking at the camera this whole time. You're like, why is he off? Why is he looking askew at a 45? It's because I forgot where the fucking camera is. All right. Um, and if you're listening, that doesn't make sense at all. But go on YouTube and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, you know, um, there's some new merch in the store. You like t-shirts? You like t-shirts? And I'm not talking about like, just on the podcast page, the thing you're on, I'm talking about Evil Vibes, Aries Clothing, podcast, Violent Professional Podcast. You know, we got all kinds of new shit on there. Uh, for example, if you're on the video right now, I got this Evil Vibes cup. I got some new cups and mugs to put shit in. You drink out of it. If you didn't know what a mug is, you drink out of it. You fucking put things in it. I mean, you could put your fucking keys in there. You could put your car keys, you know? Um... I try to drink Coors Light out of it, but just it just doesn't make sense, you know. It gets all fizzy and shit. It's not not how I like to enjoy enjoy my Colorado Kool Aid. I said that really slurred, like I'm really fucking hammered. This is my third one. Um, let me try that again. It's not how I like to enjoy my Colorado Kool Aid. Um, I like to enjoy it out of the bottle or the can, you know. But if drinking beer out of a fucking Waffle House mug is your thing, you could do that. You go to Evil Vibes, you know, get that get that fucking you know new mug with the fucking ghost getting fucking shanked in the face. That's that's cool. Yeah, merch is in the store. Evil Vibes, Aries Clothing, and Final Professional, and I'm pretty sure there's some at Core Concepts as well. Um, let me kick this episode off by. I mean, I've been I've been talking for fucking twenty minutes. Shit's crazy. No, I want to talk about I want to talk about something I got in the mail today, I and mean, it doesn't make sense. It's it's like it goes back to mind your fucking business, mind your fucking business, people. If you if you are the type. That likes to join fucking HOAs or homeowners association. For those of you who don't know what HOA is, you're a piece of shit. You're a goddamn Karen. Busy body piece of fucking shit. You need to mind your fucking business. Because the letter I got just just fucking makes me remember how much of a stupid decision I made when I bought my house. 
Because HOAs, if you've never been a part of one, let me fucking, let, let me indulge you, <laughs> indulge you in this situation. So to give you an example of what an HOA is like, and it's very fucking true, an HOA is an organization. And uh, let me go back. When I bought my house, my realtor, the guy I went through to get my fucking house, he was going through all the fucking features of the house and like what it looked like and all that shit walking me around. I was like, yeah, it's cool. Fucking great. It was great for me. And at the end of it, the fucking dude who I actually like, I actually like, he's a very nice gentleman. So if I say something negative about him, uh, no hard feelings. I'm just pissed off at the way that it was described. So as we're going through the fucking house and I'm getting ready to fucking make my decision, put in my bid, you know, because if you never bought a house, you got to bid on it. You got to say, I'll give you this much. And the fucking owner of the house goes, yeah, I'll take that. Or they go, here's the fucking, here's the fucking uh, price I want. And then you kind of meet in the middle, you bargain and all that shit. Um, you say, I want a new roof or a new water heater. Or I want a fucking new appliances or, you know, you just bargain for shit and then the terms are made and then it's all done and you get a, you got to sign a bunch of paper, paperwork and, um, but I meant to, to, to hurry up in this conversation, um, you know, he glossed, he, gl- he glossed over what an HOA is and me as a fucking a young dude who's buying a house with a ton of money to do it. He uh, he just glossed over it. And, and it went to... It, it was to the tune of something like this. Oh, by the way, just you got to know... Just so you know, this this house has an HOA. Uh, and I'm like, what's an HOA? He's, he goes, well, it's a homeowners association. They, you know, take care of the grass. You know, they cut your grass take out your trash you throw it in the dumpster they provide dumpsters um multiple dumpsters all over the neighborhood and uh you know they make sure that you know the grass is cut and the fucking dumpsters and the dumpsters and the grass and grass and dumpsters and all this shit and i was like oh cool they cut my grass and they got dumpsters and i could throw out shit you go yeah just for you know a little bit and you give them a little bit of extra money on top and then they do it and, uh, but I just want you to know that there's an HOA here. And I was like, cool. Well, me as a young fucking dumbass, I was like, that's fucking awesome. I don't have to worry about getting a fucking trash can. I don't work. Gotta worry about cutting my grass. <laughs> that's what I thought. And then no, I've run into nothing but issues with these motherfucker, this Gestapo fucking motherfuckers for the fucking past fucking few years to the tune of I almost lost my house house a few years ago because I said fuck them I'm not paying you anymore <laughs> because I was like I'll take out my own trash as I burn it in my backyard which lends another problem no it didn't happen but I ended up getting into a little bit of trouble a few years ago to where I had to fucking pay them a shit ton of money or I would have lost my house now to summarize it if you don't pay them you lose your fucking house, which is fucking bonkers. It's fucking bananas to me. How the fuck do I buy a house? Do I get a loan? Do I get a mortgage? I own my house. I sign the paperwork. I own my fucking house. And some people that are just cutting the grass and just taking out the fucking trash from the dumpster. How can they kick me out of my fucking house? How can they put a lien on your house? How can they foreclose on your house? How can they get the sheriffs involved to evict you out of your fucking house? That's what an HOA is. Because they can do that. Which is fucked up. So, the HOA is comprised of people within your fucking community. Your fucking neighborhood. And it's all of the fucking Karens and Kyles that, fuck, <laughs> that are have nothing better to do than walk around the fucking neighborhood on a fucking Wednesday with a clipboard and a fucking camera. Now, here's the thing about fucking HOA, too. The people that are the boards, they're chicken shit. They are the st- f- most scared fucking people and timid you will ever 
fucking meat. People that are on the board, they can give you fines. They can put it on your account. They can fucking charge you extra just for fucking telling the fuck off. Eat my dick. <laughs> they give you a fine for that. It's weird. Um. So anyway, uh, long story short, let me uh, read this fucking fine letter I got from the fucking board. The board of the Homeowners Association. Uh, this letter is coming to you as a courtesy from my HOA. It carries no penalties or fine, fines, and is strictly a warning as well as an attempt to preserve, maintain, and improve the value of the community. It is noted on May 5th, 2020, that a violation occurred on your property located at my address in Washington. With our record... Which our records indicate that you are the owner or authorized contact, specifically bold print now, exterior maintenance item, uh, let me redo that, exterior maintenance items in front of garage need to be removed. This is a violation of my HOA governing documents, which state in the event that an owner of any, re- this is the kicker, bro, in the event that any owner of any residence shall fail to maintain its his lot, his residence, and other improvements situated thereon. Why the fuck do they use those fucking terms? In a manner satisfactory to the board of architectural, the board or architectural review committee, the association shall have the right through its agents and employees to enter upon said parcel and to repair, maintain, and restore the same and the exterior residence and any other improvements erected thereon in such a manner as is deemed necessary and appropriate by either of said entities provided that the association gives the owner 30 days written notice the cost of such exterior maintenance shall thereupon why is it all grouped up to be Default assessment determined and levied against the lot on which said residence is located and the association may pr- proceed in accordance with applicable provisions of Section 4. Now, let me summarize all that fucking legal bullshit. Um, they basically what happened and, and the picture, I won't show you the picture because it tells you where I live. Not really. Because it's such a fucking stupid fucking little picture. I could barely see what happened. It's a tiny fucking one by two inch fucking picture on a thing. Courtesy notice. It shows. What it shows is the day that I was fucking building something. It was a four by two piece of plywood. (laughs) That was leaned up against my fucking garage. For no less than ten minutes. Or... (laughs) Excuse me, no more than 10 minutes. It was sitting there for 10 minutes. And I remember, because I remember that piece of wood. And those motherfuckers, the way, the angle that they took the picture was from the road at the end of my cul-de-sac. So it, they wouldn't even walk down to see what the fuck was happening or if I was outside near the piece of wood, which I was. <sighs> ha! So anyway. They gave me 30 days, and they said, you need to remove this. It's like, of course I'm fucking removing it. It's a piece of plywood that's propped up against my my fucking door. You can barely see it over my car. Like, that's, it's literally a fucking couple inches. So, let me describe the fucking people that are on the fucking HOA. They're the most weaselly pieces of shit that you'll ever meet. They're the most busybody, fucking no-job house husband or fucking wife because we got to be politically correct fuck that busy body fucking housewives they have nothing better to do and they fucking (laughs) have no hobbies and they just walk around the fucking neighborhoods with clipboards and cameras and take pictures of people's houses and fucking find them and i'll i would guarantee that these fucking hoas are corrupt as shit they're not fucking regulated for the most part, but they have these fucking big time lawyers that fucking that back these fucking things. Fuck HOAs. If you listen to this podcast, you're a young person and you're like, I'm gonna buy a house next week. Get the fuck out of any fucking idea of getting a fucking 
HOA house. It sounds great on paper. It's fucking horrible. Talk to anybody that has been a part of an HOA. Minus the board members, because why the fuck would you be a board member unless you're a fucking piece of shit? Nothing better to do. Um, you know, talk to somebody that has had an HOA and talk to somebody that hasn't. Be like, yeah, it's a little more difficult. I got to cut my grass and shit. I don't have an HOA. I got to cut my grass. But guess what? I'm all about freedom. I'm all about doing whatever the fuck I want. I I would say in libertarian principle, when like how I fucking live my life, I wouldn't. I don't give a fuck what anybody does. You want to take heroin through your asshole? Have fun. You want to cut your dick off in your bathroom and say you're a lady? Have fun with that. I don't give a fuck what you do. Just don't come over to me. Come over to my house and fucking offer me a fucking, you know, a pie or some shit after you just cut off your fucking dick. Like, don't come to my house and be like, you know, hey, let me tell you about my political affiliation. I don't give a fuck. I want you to stay away from me. Like... Whatever you got going on, that's cool. I just don't want to see you or whatever you got. Leave me the fuck alone. You know? Ah, But that's the problem is with the HOAs, they're completely opposite, which is not in my fucking wheelhouse. Like, I don't like to know about anybody. I don't like anybody to know about me. I like to stay a very secluded life. Um, You know? I don't want anything to do with any of you. Anybody that's listening... Unless you're my friend, I don't want to, I'm sorry to break your hearts, but I don't want anything to do with you. Like, if you see me out <laughs> anywhere, and you're like, hey, that's the dude for the Violent Professional Podcast that makes no sense when he talks, and he just rambles about nonsense. Um, yeah, I do, and I'll say hello to you. I'll be like, thank you for being a, a subscriber to the podcast. Thank you for being a patron, if you're not, and thank you for downloading this episode. But gosh darn gee heck, stay the fuck off my lawn, you know? We're not boys. We're not friends unless we become friends, you know, and then we'll talk on the podcast probably probably because I'm always fucking working. But anyway, uh, HOAs are bullshit. Stay away from them. We've got lawyers. They'll fuck you in the ass with the legal fine and all that shit. Um, But let's get on to some happier, happier conversation. You know, I bought a grill recently. I haven't had a grill in a long fucking time. I haven't eaten a freshly baked, freshly grilled fucking cow booty. I haven't eaten in a long time. And so that podcast trip we went on, we fucking, Mark killed it with the fucking gunpowder fucking seasoning on that fucking, that fucking steak. You know, he thought it wasn't that good. I thought it was awesome. But ever since then, I was like, fuck, I can't go back. I'm a carnivore now. I wasn't a fucking vegan before, but now I'm a fucking straight up carnivore. I gotta eat meat. I gotta chase that shit down. I gotta, I gotta run through Walmart and my skivvies and fucking spear a fucking freshly chopped up fucking steak. You know, bring it back home to the grill, put some fire under that shit, and fucking eat it with my teeth, ingest it, bring it into my intestines, to have my fucking, my fucking stomach tubes, you know devour the nutrients with inside the meat turn it into shit i gotta do that so i went and picked up a grill i went and picked up a fucking grill from walmart um and i was like holy fuck they got a lot of good deals i don't want to buy that thousand dollar grill though it's propane grill charcoal grill what do i prefer i prefer charcoal i like to i like to eat charcoal grilled meat you know you got to let the charcoal get a little hot, you know, get hot and fucking turn red, almost white, red and white. And then don't just pour a bunch of lighter fluid on and fucking cook your meat. You know, let that shit get completely red and white. If, if you grill with charcoal, you know what I'm talking about. It's just got a little bit of the fucking flakes coming off of it from the fact it's so fucking hot and pieces are peeling off of it. Get it hot. Nice and nice. Like you're like you're at a fucking corporate meeting where they're doing a trust fall exercise and they're like, oh, you fucking walk over the coals like that hot. You know, get get your fucking coals that hot. Um, and then grill that shit. I like Montreal steak uh seasoning. That's good. You know? Maybe you saw my video on on Instagram where I was talking about you know, cooking a steak. Um, so anyway, I got back from that trip, the podcast trip, and I've just been eating nothing but fucking meat. Nothing but fucking meat. 
for fucking a week, a week and a half. I don't know what time it is even. Um, you know, but it leads me to tell you about the fact, like, if you buy a grill, if you buy a grill, do not get a fucking cheap grill. I mean, while cheap grills work, you could put a fucking, a, a fucking grill, grill grate on a rock with some flame underneath it. Don't go for the cheap grill. So I got this grill for a hundred bucks and it's a stand-up grill, a charcoal grill. Cause I don't fuck with propane, you know? I've done it before, and it's just, it seems too big for me. I'm, like, I just feed myself. You know, like, I don't need this big ass grill. I got the $100 grill, and I was like, this thing's dope. It looks cool. It's fucking got this thing, this wheel that brings the charcoal up to the correct height, brings it back down. You know, so you could have the right temperature, get that shit sizzling like it's the sizzler up in my fucking place. But what I noticed is the next day, all the fucking. Paint, paint was coming, or the fucking charcoal paint, whatever the fuck it is, the black shit on the outside was flaking off. I'm like, what the fuck? Did they test this shit? Did they test the quality and consistency? No QA happened on my fucking barbecue grill, which I'm a little bit upset about. It looks like shit now, <laughs> and I've had it for fucking a week. So don't buy cheap grills. Just don't fucking do it. How about that? Okay? It, the, the best policy is spend the money. Like, you're like, oh, I need to save my money, but... Here's the deal. You spend no money, you get nothing in return. That's a fact. All right? So do yourself a favor. Spend a little bit extra. Get that good grill. Get that good anything. Like get the good equipment I'm using right now. And it goes well. You know, everything in life goes well. And maybe you spend a little bit more, but you don't get frustrated and and get on a podcast and talk shit about the thing that you just spent 100 bucks on. So, um, so I saw a meme today. I saw a meme today and it was funny. I've been seeing a lot of Karen memes in the coronavirus. There's been a lot of fire ass fucking memes coming out of the fucking coronavirus shit for real. Have you seen them? A lot of Karen memes. <laughs> the reason this whole thing's going on is about Karen. Karen's all <laughs> worried. She's got rubber gloves on like those yellow rubber gloves up to her fucking mid fire forearm and shit. Um, but one of the things I the the meme I saw was like was like <laughs> um I can't believe that people are going back to church said a lady standing in a Walmart line <laughs> like during this whole time and it, it was funny to me because it's like it's so true. It's so true like people pick and choose what they think is acceptable. Maybe they're not religious, maybe they don't agree with something, maybe they're just they have this vision of how life should be and nobody else should violate it and whatever and it goes like to my idea of like don't bother me i don't bother you do whatever the fuck you want type of situation um but it's like people during this time are like even more ideological ideological (laughs) i can't fucking speak um they have their own ideology about how things should be in life Especially the, how people should act. People should wear masks or people shouldn't. And it's like none of it's based on like the experts or anything like that. It's just like own personal opinion. That's li- <laughs> it's literally what media is, how people are acting, how, you know. When I was uh, younger, I used to fucking freak out about washing my hands and shit. And I made it talk shit to my sister because they always used to make – my brother and my sister used to make fun of me because they're like, oh, my God, he make fucking wash his hands all the time and all that shit. But it's like, oh, not so funny now. But I look at it now. It's like it's all ridiculous because I barely wash my hands now. <laughs> Just kidding. I talk a lot of shit about washing hands. You should wash your hands. Fucking hand sanitizer all the time, baby. No, but um, it's just all the crazy shit that's happening these days is all based on people's own – ideas of how things should happen and with how connected we are on social media it's it's more present than ever that you just fucking know what people think and they push their fucking agenda on you it's like social media is the new religion it's the new church it's so like you you know those people that are like super religious and pushing their fucking religion on you all the time it's like that but it's with other shit but those same people will talk shit about religion it's fucking it's really weird it's like the vegan shit or the fuck CrossFit shit or like, like you shouldn't whip your dick out in public shit. Like, uh, people need to mind their fucking business. 
Seriously, like, if you take anything from this podcast, mind your fucking business. Just live your life. And I think, I think generally most people are like that. They just don't want to be bothered. Like, I don't, you know, I just, <laughs> it's just a crazy time, you know? Everything about this time is weird. The reaction, the overreaction, the government overreaching. It's all of it's very weird. I think it was, still doesn't make sense. I've been I've been searching for something that makes sense these past few weeks. And it doesn't really feel like life is any different. Do you feel it's different? Do you feel like life is different for you? You know, I'm driving around fucking town to get gas or food or whatever the fuck I'm doing on a day-to-day basis, which I don't drive that much. I, I think I went two months without buying gas. I finally just bought some gas. I was pleasantly surprised at how much I spent. Um... But, like, I'm driving around, and I remember, like, the last time I was driving around, I was like, man, it doesn't seem much different. It seems like there's more people out, like, just doing, living their life. And I just, it makes it even more like I don't really know what's happening. I don't think, like, this area isn't much different. And it seems like it would be with all the, the ideologies going on. Seems like it would be different than this. You think you'd see the streets cleared out. You you think you'd see something, but it's different. It's just different than I thought. Um, I don't have an answer. Still don't. Been telling you this every week since this whole thing started. I I still don't have a fucking answer. And it's confusing. Um, but what I do know is washing your hands is good. Just generally, you know, you don't want to you don't want to fucking be wiping your ass and have your finger slide in your butthole by accident. And they go and pick up your chalupa on a taco taco Tuesday, tasting, you know, some of you're like, this taco tastes like shit, or this chalupa tastes like shit. But nope, it's just your shit. Um, so going back on the thing with Walmart, uh, on the meme, I'll go on the other side of things. This lady in the line, the Walmart line, <laughs> um, how can church be back in session? says a lady in a Walmart line. Well, let me tell you. Let me let me take the other side of that meme where they're trying to talk shit about people in the line at Walmart. Uh, <laughs> um, I can see from their perspective because if you've been in a Walmart, you know that those people have high immunities. So they aren't worried about... it's. And that's funny to me because it's like very true. It's like people that go to Walmart, 99% of them have all the immunities. Because they they routinely get back to their trailer and they're sniffing cat shit from their cat box. And their fucking 15 pizza boxes that are all stacked up next to their commemorative Avengers cups from Taco Bell. They have a high immunity because they don't wash their hands. They just found out antibacterial soap exists. <laughs> because there was a sale for fucking four for one at fucking Walmart rolling back prices. So that meme makes actual sense. Like if you look at it from like the me, the person that made the meme was talking shit about people in Walmart, talking shit about people in church. But actually, if you look at it right, <laughs> how the fuck do people go to church? They wash their hands all the time. They're in the holy water all the time. Of course, they're clean. They have no immunity. <laughs> you know, God save them. God save them. You know, they've got clean hands. No immunity, no antibodies. They're fucking sick all the time. <laughs> I just lost any religious follower of this podcast. But I don't think any any of them exist, actually. Anyway. I say a lot of anyway and nonsensical things. I say fucking as commas. I say anyway. Um, but anyway... Um, you know, there's a thing all over the fucking the fucking YouTubes and the fucking podcasts. Everybody's talking about Joe Rogan moving to fucking Spotify and how it doesn't make sense and all that shit. And there's other podcasts I listen to. They're 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 doing exclusive deals with Spotify. And people are like, "How does that make sense?" Blah blah. And I'll I'll tell you, it's very fucking simple. YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, anybody in the main social media avenue youtube let's go on youtube because that's what we're talking about here why why are podcasters leaving youtube why are they leaving any of these major things why are they striking a deal with a strictly audio based platform because here's the fact first amendment still fucking exists 
And all of those major platforms do not believe that people should say what they want. They don't believe, regardless of how ridiculous and outlandish it is, they don't believe that they should say whatever they want because they believe that words are violence, which me, myself, and many of you, I'm sure, don't believe that any fucking words are violence. I believe you can incite violence, and that is going against the, the First Amendment. That isn't protected under the First Amendment. You can't tell people that on a mass scale to go fucking fight somebody or kill somebody. You can't do that. Um, so I completely understand on a platform such as Spotify, which we're a part of, that an audio-based spoken word platform is why everybody's moving there. Yeah, like a lot of these people are getting paid. They're getting fucking paid. Now, if you look at it from a perspective of some of these podcasts, Joe Rogan specifically made $30 million off of fucking off of his podcast this past year on YouTube, just from YouTube, right? But if you have a giant fucking paycheck coming where it guarantees you get paid X amount of dollars and it calculates out correct. I don't know the specifics on his deal or anybody else's deal that's been on a on the fucking move to Spotify. It makes total fucking sense because you no longer have to, for one, do advertisements for fucking people. Which, as much as I like core concepts, it's kind of a pain in the ass to talk about fucking things like that. And I would imagine for fucking um, somebody like the big podcasters that they... They would rather just fucking talk to people and have maybe a fucking hour and a half episode as opposed to a fucking two hour episode where they get to the meat and bones and they don't have to say, hold on, I'll fucking let me I have to pay the bills first and all that shit. Because if you know anything about me, I fucking hate advertisements like I like the people that I advertise for mostly me. I like Logan from Core Concepts and I won't pick up a fucking advertisement tizer tizement or a company anymore unless I fucking believe in them. You know, I've run into that problem in the past. I just fucking was like, yeah, just fucking cool. We need uh, advertisers. But now you have these fucking big podcasters which are moving to a strictly spoken word platform such as Spotify. And I fucking, I'm thrilled to hear that. I'm thrilled to hear that all these big fucking time people are moving over to there. Because if you have a platform where if, if people play the wrong YouTube thing or they say the wrong fucking word, they demonetize them like the their livelihood, what they fucking go in. Like their job is to make awesome content that everyone fucking loves. Fuck, man. Like some of these people have millions of followers and they go in each day and they have a fucking warehouse or a fucking studio um, as such as myself. Like I built a studio to fucking bring this fucking podcast to you guys and I would hate it if my sole method of fucking payment or fucking um, livelihood is on the whims of somebody who doesn't like what you said and they can go no more money today and my views may be whatever and let's use these big people as a fucking example they have millions of views and that episode's gone and it doesn't matter anymore because like, I'm not saying any of this shit that we put out, like podcasters or whoever put out, doesn't matter. It's just like when people expect to make money off of something and that's their job and they – even though they love what they do, it's still a kick in the dick when they're like, you don't get that revenue from the ads and we're going to take all of it. When it's like that motherfucker worked for all the fucking ad revenue to begin with and he's putting it out on your platform and you're fucking taking all of it. <laughs> Because he said the wrong word, or he fucking put up the wrong image, or he put up the wrong video. So, long and short, I'm super happy to fucking that all these big podcasters are now starting to go to Spotify. Spotify is an awesome fucking platform. If you don't, if you don't have Spotify, what the fuck are you waiting for? I have plenty of people that go, "What the fuck, Spotify?" Like, I don't want. Like, it just takes a download. Like, go on any app, like iPhone. Android, just download the shit. Just download the shit. And you have unlimited access to all music, all new music, all fucking podcasts, all the shit. And now they're getting into video too. So it's just a download. It's a free app. And then you can also subscribe and pay some money. Like I pay, I have a, I do Spotify for 10 bucks a month and I get no ads. I got every fucking thing out there. 
um, and it's fucking great. And we're on there. So if you're on one of these other things, like I always hear about these obscure fucking podcast fucking platforms like Tinderbox or fucking like fucking uh, Sound Farts or whatever. Like people are like, are you on Sound Farts? And I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck that is. And I look at where we're at and I'm like, dude, we're on like fucking 250 different platforms. Like I don't even know what to fucking tell you. Uh, so yeah, download Spotify. We're on there. We're on all the fucking major platforms. Apparently, to 150 different platforms. I didn't even know until a few weeks ago. Uh, we're on iHeartRadio. We're on every fucking thing. But yeah, go go download Spotify. Don't be a dick. Don't go. I don't like change. Fucking step outside your comfort zone. I guarantee you, if you get on Spotify, you will love it. And all the major podcasters are moving to it, which is awesome, and I love it. Um, but yeah. And it turns out First Amendment exists, and a lot of these fucking smart motherfuckers are like, fuck all these people that try to censor us. So that's the main point. First Amendment still exists. Fucking can say whatever you want. Um, yeah, and I'll finish this episode up because it's just been just been me rambling, and I don't even know what I've been talking about. Um, I want to I want to add this in because I thought this movie was awesome. This is the Netflix movie of the week, for me, at least, is The Wrong Missy, starring David Spade and the cast of every other Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> uh, the Wrong Missy is a really good movie, like, and I laughed more than I've laughed at any comedy in a long fucking time. It's silly, it's fucking heartwarming, it's, it's David Spade finally in a fucking movie again. He hasn't been in one as a leading character in a long fucking time. Tommy Boy, I think, was like the last one I saw. Maybe he's got more, but he's he's good in this one. And it's believable and funny. And they drop the F-bomb a fucking lot, which isn't common for an Adam Sandler movie. Adam, Adam Sandler Adam Sandler movie. So go check that out. It's on Netflix. Uh, not sponsored by any of this shit, but I just wanted to mi- to let you guys know. Uh, the Wrong Missy is a great fucking movie. I laugh my ass off. Um, and since this is technically a comedy podcast, I figure I'd tell you about some comedy. Uh, anyway, um, finishing this episode out. Thank you for being here. I've got to go take a major piss. I've drankin', drankin a shit ton of beer so far. And um, yeah, uh, go check out Core Concepts. You know, they're awesome, they hide things. Their uh, core concepts, us.com. Use code VIOPRO, V I O P R O. You can find them at K O R E K O N C E P T S U S.com. You can find them at core underscore official, or no, core underscore concepts underscore official and on Instagram. Uh, go check them out. Tell them I sent you. Go tell them the Violent Professional Podcast sent you. Uh, go check out uh, evilvibesco.com a lot of hate on there you know you like those fucking rants you go on there get those rants um, got some stuff on there wicked designs um, go to strikeforceenergy.com you know I like to get hyped I've been drinking strikeforce all day I like the grape I get the pump 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 it up bottle I think it's thirty nine ninety five. You get on that subscription. You use uh, code Evil Vibes twenty percent off. You get free shipping over thirty five, my friends. So go check that out. Strikeforceenergy.com. Use code Evil Vibes twenty percent off plus free shipping over thirty five. Get that pump bottle. Get that subscription. Support the podcast. You support this podcast. You support Strikeforceenergy.com. And if you want to support the podcast in more ways than one, get some hidden content and some more interaction that you never see anywhere else. Some personal shit. I send you some stuff that you don't get anywhere else. Go to patreon.com slash violent professional. Sign up for as little as a dollar and you get all that fucking extra juicy content you can't find anywhere else. Um, And you support this podcast. All the equipment that I show you from time to time. um, All the cool shit. The improvements is all because of the patrons. That's a fucking fact. If you want to see this podcast grow further... Um, you want to see more, you get direct inputs, what you want to see, you know, you like animals, you like animals fucking, you like animals killing humans, you like stories about animals killing animals while they fucking humans, then you go to patreon.com 
slash violent professional and you give me those inputs and I, I I input them into the future episodes. You know? That's how it works. Patrons get the fucking premiere treatment. That's what I'm doing it for. If you wanna if you wanna get the premiere treatment too, get a little proverbial back rub, you go to patreon.com slash violent professional. And with that kids, thank you for uh thank you for tuning in this episode. I know it's been weird, but I want to get on this on this uh, I want to get on a podcast each week so that's what I'm doing and with that I'll embody the ghost of Mark who's still alive bye bye if you like this episode please consider subscribing to us on Patreon by visiting patreon.com forward slash violent professional by subscribing you have access to all the episodes as soon as we upload as well as bonus content that you can't see anywhere else you can also support us by simply giving us a positive rating on your listening platform of choice And above all, thank you for the continued support of the Violent Professional Podcast.